Deputy Sovereign Grand Master, Officers of the Sovereign Grand Lodge, Independent Water Lodge Fellows, Grand Representatives, International Guests and Visitors, I bring you fraternal greetings from the members of the Executive of the Grand Lodge of Australasia, IWF, and in particular from my jurisdiction of the Grand Lodge of South Australia. This is my third visit to Sovereign Grand Lodge and my first as the Grand Sire of the Grand Lodge of Australasia. It was a privilege and a pleasure to have been installed as Grand Sire of the Grand Lodge last November. My term of office is three years, expiring in November 2015. And during that time, I'm sure I'll oversee some very pleasurable events. There's one event that will happen in 2014 that will sadden me greatly. I watched with interest as uh, you conducted your elections of the new Grand Warden yesterday, and I was pleased to see that the new Grand Warden is from Texas. There's an unofficial rivalry between Texas and Australia to see who can have the biggest of anything. <laughs> There's a, a little story that goes around about a Texan that uh, came to Australia and he was being shown around uh, very nicely and he'd shown a, a, a pad of wheat and the Texan said to his host, well, he said, you know, in Texas uh, our paddocks are twice as big and the wheat is twice as thick and twice as high. That may be true, I don't know. They moved on and the host uh, showed the Texan uh, a herd of um, very nice um, Aberdeen Angus cattle. And the Texan looked at them and again said to his host, well, he said, you know, in Texas, he said, our longhorns are probably twice as big. And the host thought, well, okay, what can I do to impress this guy? So they drove on a bit further and the, the host saw in the distance some kangaroos <coughs> in a paddock hopping around. And uh, the Texan saw them, he'd never seen kangaroos before. He said to his host, well, what on earth are they? And the host said, well, don't you have grasshoppers in uh, Texas? <laughs> Brother Danny, is um, nothing I've warned you as uh, Grand Warden. In 2015, in November, presumably, you'll be sold the Grand Master. And uh, we'd certainly love to extend an invitation to you at this very early stage to attend um, our Australasian session, which will be held in Launceston, uh, Tasmania. <coughs> Tasmania is that little island right on the um, southeast end of Australia, probably the, uh, the last major land mass that you uh, have before you hit the Antarctic. So we'd be pleased to see you there in 2015, and anyone else that would like to come down to, uh, to Australia. The past year, unfortunately, has seen a small decrease in the number of lodges and members within the jurisdiction of Australasia. Age is catching up with our members, as everywhere, and the number of members being initiated is less than the number of members passing on. A jurisdiction must have something other than increased statistics to report, however, and perhaps rather than concentrating on the number of members within a jurisdiction, we can talk about whether the current members are good old fellows or the beggars and whether they do some incredible work for mankind. The members within the Grand Lodge of Australasia were given permission to have mixed lodges and social lodges in the late 1980s. As yet, this initiative is not standard the decline in membership, but we are getting some more ladies joining our fellowship. We know that change is essential to our survival, but what path do we choose? What's the ingredient that will make people want to join us? We in Australasia have not found the answer to that question, so I can't stand here and give you the silver bullet that will increase membership. Success of any organisation is never guaranteed, and we know that strong leadership, good public relations, and an individual commitment by members to recruit new members and then to retain them is necessary. Each jurisdiction must always provide for the current social needs of its population and shouldn't rely on what it offered in any case for the last 135 years. We need to change, because if nothing changes in the order, then we most likely, most likely won't survive for long past 2019. Our two sons, aged 16 and 19, have joined the order, but we 
we need to offer them something different to retain their interest. They've already told me that um, what we're doing in, the, in their lodge uh, is not what's going to keep them there. Changes to our social environment are racing straight past us in Australasia, and I dare say in other jurisdictions around the world. Twitter and Facebook are the normal ways to communicate. And I don't know how many of you guys are on Twitter or Facebook, um, but most of us are being forced to, whether we want to or not, as a way of communicating with their kids. Each of our jurisdictional Grand Lodges are continuing to provide funds for a variety of charitable purposes, and Lodges offer members financial assistance, for example, those who suffered losses through earthquakes and bushfires. The assistance provided by the Grand Lodge of New Zealand to its members affected by the devastating earthquakes in Christchurch are a case in point. My jurisdiction of South Australia has recently established a charitable foundation which provides grants to specific youth and aged groups. We also established a charity in 1996 to promote fishing as a recreational pursuit for disabled people of all ages. The Grand Lodge of New South Wales has established a medical research fund which gives annual grants. The Grand Lodge of Tasmania also makes targeted charitable donations. Cultural differences between jurisdictions will continue to exist and we all need to represent ourselves for our own environment. We do, however, have a common bond of belief of how we should live our lives and that will not change. The Grand Lodge of Australasia has been actively associated with the International Council, now the International Advisory Board, since the late 1950s and we will continue to provide input to that body because now more than ever, for an international approach to a range of issues is required to ensure our survival. To not change the way we operate is no longer an option, it has to happen. Currently we're working on a project to form an odd fellow association or network within Australia with representatives of the Grand United Order of Odd Fellows and the Manchester Unity Independent Order of Odd Fellows. Each of the organisations recognises that strength in numbers and we are actively promoting and participating in interaction between these organisations. We take inspiration from the activities of our brothers in the Philippines and members of our Grand Lodge would dearly love to expand into the South Pacific as our charter would allow us to do. The event that will sadden me the most during my term of office will be the surrendering of the Charter of the Grand Lodge of New Zealand which is planned to take place in October 2014. Most of us would agree that Odd Fellowship is a way of life and that each of us has drawn many benefits from being an Odd Fellow or a Rebecca. We in Australasia enjoy receiving visits from overseas members of the IWF and MU IWF and feel that this international visitation aspect of Odd Fellowship membership is much underutilised as a marketing tool. I deem it a pleasure and a privilege to represent the jurisdiction of Australasia and to foster the benefits of Odd Fellowship. I was going to present a plaque to the um, Sovereign Grand Master, but in his absence, uh, Brother Bob, would you accept that? The plaque was to um, <coughs> Commemorate and to congratulate Brother Charles on his term as Sovereign Grand Master. <laughs> My wife Heather and I would like to thank you all for your hospitality and friendship, and we wish the officers and representatives of the Sovereign Grand Lodge every success for the remainder of the session and its associated event events. Remember, always be proud to be an officer.